What's going on YouTube? CyberOptic here with a brand new video for you today. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a couple of very useful tools inside of Blender that you can use to fix small projection errors. Now, there may be times when you are using the quick edit mode and you are trying to project all the way through the weapon, and you'll notice that maybe the paint doesn't go all the way around and you need some way to be able to fix that. Or maybe you were projecting and you get paint on different parts that you don't want to be there. Uh, there are actually a couple of tools inside of Blender that you can use that will help you to fix these small errors. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video today. So anyways, let's go. So the first thing we're going to talk about in this video is how to fix small projection errors whenever you are using things like the quick edit mode to add graphics to your weapon. Uh, there may be times where you try to project all the way through the weapon, yet you will still have some small areas that do not get color on them and you do need to go in and fix those. Uh, there are several tools inside of Blender underneath texture paint that you can use. The first one that we're going to talk about is, of course, the paintbrush tool, which is extremely useful whenever you are going back and trying to fix some of these projection errors. Now, as you guys can see here, I have set up a UMP45 with just a solid black base color. If we go under my texture paint tab, you'll see that I have added a default base texture right here to match the body of this weapon. And I have also turned off occlude and back face culling uh, so that my graphic will project all the way through. Uh, next, I'm going to hit quick edit. Once this opens up, we're going to go in here. We're going to bring this graphic in. We're going to enlarge it just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to get this on the weapon right where I want it maybe something like that. Uh, we're gonna delete layer one. We're gonna hit file save. And then of course we're gonna go back and click apply. Now, if I scroll in here real close, you'll see some of the errors. You'll notice this really big black spot right here. You'll also know it's a black line running through the back of this. Uh, and the first thing I want to do is I wanna go in with a paintbrush and just sort of fix some of these little errors. Now, the first thing I want to note right off the bat, uh, we turned occlude and backface culling off so that this would project all the way through. Uh, if I turn this over and I start to paint on the bottom part of this right now, uh, with the, both of these off, it will actually project through onto other parts of the weapon while we're painting as well. Uh, so first things first, you always want to make sure and turn both of these back on before you start fixing these errors. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to pick our color here. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to this first color box. I'm going to go right here under hex and I'm just going to add my hex code and click enter. Uh, the last thing I want to do is I want to set the radius and the strength of my paintbrush. Uh, as you guys can see here, these settings are right here in this menu above our color picker. Uh, we have our strength set to one, which most of the time you're going to leave it on that. Uh, and then of course we have our radius right here. You can also right click on your mouse and you can get these options as well where you can go in here and sort of change the radius or the strength. So now that I have my radius and my color set up, the next thing I want to do is hold down my left trigger button and go ahead and start painting over some of these small errors. So let's just go ahead and paint all of this in. Again, like I mentioned before, you know, you definitely want to make sure and turn these back on or else I would be painting uh, back here on this part of the weapon as well. Let's just go ahead and cover some of these up. Now you'll notice that I am trying to keep some background here uh, behind the part that I'm painting. That's just to make sure that I don't overpaint onto other areas of the weapon. So let's just go ahead and paint all of this. Let's go ahead and fix all of these little errors. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Maybe something like that. 
So now, as you can see, we fixed a lot of these little errors. And if we go back over here to our shading tab, you'll see that this looks even all the way around. Uh, so that's the first thing I wanted to show you guys. Whenever you are projecting an image all the way through, there may be times where you have to go back with a paintbrush and sort of fix little projection errors that will happen. Uh, and that's basically how you can do it using the paintbrush inside of Blender. A few quick tips that I wanted to give at this point in the video when using the paintbrush. Uh, one thing you'll notice right here underneath these color boxes is that we have a lot of different things that we can play around with here. Now I won't have time to go through all of these, but I did want to show you guys a couple that I use quite often whenever I am using the paintbrush. Uh, the first one is the ability to be able to draw a straight line. Uh, let's say, for example, we notice that this looks very pixelated. Maybe we want to soften this edge up a little bit by just painting a straight line down through here. There is a very simple way of doing this with the paintbrush. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to go to this drop down called Stroke. And right here you will notice stroke method space. This is actually the normal paintbrush mode uh, that it will be on by default. But if we use this drop down here, you'll notice that you have a lot of different options that you can play around with. But right here you'll notice one called line. If we select this and then find a starting point here on our project and click and hold our left trigger, then drag our line and get it exactly the way we want. Uh, once we let off our left trigger, you'll see that it just does a perfectly straight line and that has actually softened that edge out a little bit. Uh, so that's the first tip I wanted to give you guys. You know, there may be times when you need a perfectly straight line uh, and this is how you would go about doing that using the paintbrush inside of Blender. The other point that I wanted to make is you're not always going to be working with just one color. There may be times in your project where you have two or more colors that you have to work with. Uh, and there's a very simple way to go back and forth between two colors inside a blender. You'll notice right here we have two different color boxes. If I click on this second one and pick a color, uh, let's say maybe a red for instance, you'll notice that now I have a blue and a red. If I go in here and I draw my line out and I let it off, you'll notice that it's blue. However, if I hold down the control button on my keyboard and do the same thing, you'll notice that now I have a red line. Uh, so I do find a lot of use for this. There are times when I need to go back and forth between colors uh, inside of a project and by simply selecting the two colors that you want and holding down the control button, you can do that very easily. We've talked about using the paintbrush to fill in certain areas that didn't project all the way through, uh, but you may have times in your design where you actually want to cover something up and you can use the paintbrush tool for this as well. Now, as you guys can see, I have added this white paint splatter here to the side of this Glock, uh, but if we roll this over onto the top, you'll see how it sort of curves up this edge right here. If we look at our UV over here, this does not look very good. Uh, so I'd really like to go in and sort of cover all of this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select a top hand view. Uh, that way we can see these edges real well. Uh, I'm also going to make sure and turn occlude and backface culling on so that it doesn't erase anything on the side of my weapon. Uh, next, I'm going to go in and I'm going to choose the base color that I have set for my weapon right here, which is 000000, just to make it easy. Uh, once I have my color select, I'm then going to go right down here to stroke. I'm going to set my stroke method to line. I'm also going to turn the radius of my brush down to around 20. Then once I have all of this set up, I'm just going to select a point right here on my weapon. I'm going to uh, drag this line out and then I'm just going to let off. And now as you can see, it has cleaned up this edge and made it look a lot nicer. You can also see it over here on our UV as well. If we roll this over, you'll see that this graphic goes perfectly to this edge right here. Uh, as well as doing this on the weapon itself, you can also do it over here uh, on this UV as well if you choose to do so. Uh, 
Uh, but real quickly, I just wanted to show you guys that there may be times in your design where you need to fill in certain parts of your weapon, uh, but there may also be times when you need to cover certain things up. And the paintbrush is a really useful tool for doing this. So the next tool I want to talk about inside of Blender is the smear tool and the smear tool can be extremely useful in certain situations. Now, as you guys can see here, this time I have added a gradient to the grip of this weapon. Obviously there are a lot of different shades as this goes from darker to lighter. And if I tried to use a paintbrush and go in here and fill these spots in, it would take me a very long time to do so. So a lot of times in cases like this, I find that the smear tool is just a lot easier to use. Now, just as before, we want to first make sure that occlude and back face culling are turned on. If we do not have these turned on when we start to smear, it will smear the paint on the other side as well. Then once we have both of those on, we're just going to go to this third tool right here, which is our smear tool. Once we have our smear tool selected, because our gradient runs in a line like this, I want to make sure that my strokes run in that same direction. Uh, I'm going to start first on this side of this dot. I'm just going to hold in my left trigger button over here on the color, and I'm just going to sort of drag this color over the top of this spot like so. And then I'm probably going to go from both directions. You'll notice I'll kind of go back and forth. Uh, that just makes sure that it gets rid of all that black. And as you can see, I was able to successfully get rid of that entire spot without actually having to use a paintbrush to fix it. Uh, next, let's go in and start working on this section. Uh, so I'm going to start right here at the bottom. I'm going to start pulling some paint into the middle. Uh, first from one side and then from the other. Now you'll notice I still have a little bit of a black line right there. I'm just going to keep kind of going back and forth until that black line is completely gone. Then once that is gone, I'm just going to take this a little bit at a time and just kind of move upward like so, doing this kind of in very small motions. Uh, so as you can see, using this tool can be very useful. Uh, it can take a lot of time off of your project. Obviously, like I mentioned before, if you tried to use a paintbrush and fill all of this in, it would take you a very long time to do so. Uh, also, another note, make sure that occasionally you kind of rotate this around and look at it. I can see that it still looks a little bit darker here. So let's bring a little bit more color in and kind of cover that up. Make sure it's very even. Then once we have it the way that we want it, we can go back over to our shading tab. We can scroll in here real close and we can take a look at it and see what it's going to look like inside of our project. Uh, so as you guys can see, the smear tool can be extremely useful, especially in cases like this where you are using a gradient inside of your project and you need to go in and fill in small projection errors. One final thing I wanted to mention about the smear tool earlier in the video, I showed you guys how you could set the stroke method to line when using your paintbrush. Uh, you can also use this method when you are using the smear tool as well. So if you want to make sure that you are staying in perfectly straight lines with your gradient as you are moving up, uh, you can use this method to make sure that you are doing so. So as you guys can see, I'm just kind of drawing this across, making sure that my lines are perfectly straight across each time. That way I know that I'm using the correct color uh, as I'm moving up this gradient. Uh, so that's just one thing I wanted to make you guys aware of. You know, you can use this line method uh, to use it with the smear tool as well as with your paintbrush tool. For the final example in this video, I want to show you guys another way that you can use these tools whenever you are creating a design inside of Blender. Now, you'll notice that I have a couple of different graphics, both on the left and the right hand side of this weapon. But if we look at the top, you'll notice that there isn't anything up here. Now, I could take my paintbrush tool and sort of fill this in. Uh, that's one way to do it. However, the way that I chose to do this was to create three separate graphics. I have one for each side, and then of course I have one for the top here. So real quickly, I wanna add the graphic to the top part of this weapon. So I'm gonna to go to a viewpoint top. We're gonna to hit quick edit. 
Uh, I am going to go find the graphic for the top part of this weapon and bring it into my project. Uh, I just want to scroll in and place this where it needs to be. Uh, and then I'm going to go up here to the top and sort of stretch this out. So let me hit shift and stretch this to right there. Then once I have this where I want it, the next thing I'll do is, of course, delete layer one, file save, and then apply it to my design. Now that we have this inside of our design, let's take a close look at this. You'll notice that we have some errors right here. We have this white line running through here. Uh, we need to go in and fix that. Also, you'll notice that this doesn't really match up right here on the front part of the weapon, so we will want to fix that as well. Now, you can use either of the uh, two tools that I showed you. You can either use your paintbrush and go in here and fill this in, or of course, you can use the smudge tool, whichever one you choose. Uh, I made sure that the top part of this gradient here matched with the color on the top, so we can really do either or. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to use the smudge tool and sort of bring this blue right here over the top of this white. And then I'm just going to kind of drag it down until it covers up all of this area. Like so. And as you can see, this is fairly easy. Uh, it's not going to take me a whole lot of time to fix this part of the weapon up. Obviously, as we get closer up here to these parts, we don't want to mess them up. Uh, but as you can see, using that smear tool, I was able to fix this very quickly. Uh, let me bring the radius down just a little bit and make this a little bit smaller. Uh, let's go ahead and fix the rest of this line right here. Uh, also right here in the front, I told you that it looked a little wonky. Uh, this and this don't match, so I'm going to use the smear tool to bring these colors over into this one, like so. Just going to kind of go back and forth until we get this the way that we want it. Maybe something like that. Just sort of play around with it until we get it the way that it looks correct. Maybe something like that. Uh, and that looks pretty good. So now if we go over into our shading, uh, we can see that this looks a lot better. This looks a lot more natural. Uh, and we were able to do this using three separate graphics in our smear tool. So this concludes my video on the paintbrush and the smear tool inside of Blender. And hopefully you guys got some really good information out of this. Now, whenever you are doing projects, you're obviously going to always have small little errors that you have to go back and fix, especially when you are projecting from one program to another. And these tools can be extremely useful in helping you to get your design to the finish line. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this information and I can't wait to see what you guys do with it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you would, please leave likes or comments down below and make sure and hit that subscribe button because it really helps this channel out a lot. Anyways, thank you guys so much and we'll see you in the next video.